Are you part of the ABC Club? Or maybe you're not part of the ABC Club. Maybe you want nothing but Chardonnay. Check out this wine as I review it next on Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so let's get into the next wine that I'm gonna be doing today. Um, this is the 2014 Louis Jadot Chasson Montorché Premier Cru Morgeau Clos de la Chapelle Domaine de Duc de Magenta. Magenta, Magenta, Magenta. Not Magenta, but that's what it looks like. So uh, Magenta is an actual Premier Cru uh, vineyard in the Chasson Montaché area. Uh, I did get this in my during my uh, previous life at the Plaza Club. Uh, I did pay 60 bucks for it. That's probably pretty close to actual retail um, since it's a private club and they, um, at least that private club, had really, really good prices. So with that said, um, I can tell you that the storing conditions for this particular wine weren't the best. So um, it is possible that this wine may not come out to be awesome, or maybe it will, who knows? But Premier Cru, and um, ooh, it's, this is really hard to take out. Premier Cru, all right, so um, who is Louis Jadot? So Louis Jadot is a um, negotiant uh, in Burgundy. Now they have a lot of holdings and um, throughout all of Burgundy. And I mean, th everything from Chablis all the way down to Beaujolais and everywhere in between. Uh, they were founded in 1859 by Louis-Henri Denis Jadot. Uh, their grapes are harvested by hand and put in uh, small cases in order not to damage the fruit. Grapes are pressed softly. They ferment in oak barrels uh, produced by their own cooperage. And about a third of the barrels are new, and aging usually lasts about 15 months on fine leaves before bottling. Now, this part of the of the winemaking process, well, actually, the whole part of the winemaking process, for the most part, is what they do with every wine at Jadot. There might be some like variations as far as how much oak, uh, how much oak aging happens. You know, maybe a Grand Cru gets a little bit more, maybe a Village gets a little bit less. But as far as like how much new oak, they try to have an the philosophy of they don't need a lot of new oak, just enough to give it some character. Um, that's from my visit to Jadot when I went to Burgundy back in uh, 17. And uh, uh, about, let's see, three, four years ago, four, maybe five, four or five years ago, um, during my time at Morton's, um, I actually met the retired winemaker uh, for Jadot because he started up a new project called uh, Resonance and that was started in, see, uh, he retired in 2012. He'd been the winemaker for 42 years at Jadot. And he came out of retirement to found uh, this winery, Resonance, which I visited while I was in Willamette. And it was just a tasting appointment, but uh, his, name is, um, his name is Jacques Ladiere. And uh, he's kind of like, I guess the head winemaker there. And then uh, Guillaume Large, uh, not large, but Large, L-A-R-G-E. And um, I got to hang out with him, and uh, it was really cool. We, we had a really, really great uh, visit with with uh, uh, going through the property and uh, tasting their line of wines. And I got to see Jacques again, um, so it was kind of cool. Anyway, it was a cool spot. So if you go to Burgundy, go see Jadot. It's really impressive. Uh, maybe I threw some pictures up uh, from from my visit. And then definitely visit Resonance Residence um, and uh, check that place out. I'll have links uh, below in the description or at the website to uh, both websites so you can check out the story. So let's, uh, I think I hit everything. Yeah, I 
Yeah, I did. All right, let's get right into the wine. Um, you know, a, a, definitely a deep yellow color. It's kind of hard to really give a good analysis of color when I have a red background, but I mean, I can see it's you know, a deeper yellow color. Um, it definitely is, uh, I would say, medium plus in the aromatics because I can really smell. It's almost like a, there's almost like a perfumed quality up here, almost like a soapy, like not a bad way, but like a like a hand soap uh, perfume quality from way up here, which I don't normally get from um, Chardonnay. Maybe it's just because I'm trying to like be more careful with not sticking my nose right into it. But from from this high up, I can really smell that that popcorny type of stuff, that corn. Well, not quite burnt popcorn, but that that really like riper or roasted corn type of thing. But it's not overwhelming, but it's definitely present in the wine. Like if I was blinding this and I smelled that, I'm like, it's Chardonnay because not that any other white wine can't do that, but Chardonnay in particular really will develop that character. And I, I get told by... I've been told a few things about this. I've been told it's from reductive winemaking, and I've also been told it's from the fermentation temperature or maybe the speed of the fermentation. So it sounds like a bunch of people have different theories, but the only person that was actually a winemaker <laughs> that told me this, told me a theory, uh, he's the one who told me he thinks it might be reductive, but since, uh, and they do have stainless steel tanks at Jadot, so, it's possible it came from some reductive winemaking during fermentation, but I'm not entirely, uh, well, it says they ferment in oak barrels too. So I don't know exactly where this popcorn and corn aromas really are coming from. If you know, please put them in the comment. Like if you're a winemaker and you can be like, this is where it comes from. And maybe you have like a, a link to show me because I've tried to find this every once in a while and it, I, I'm always like stumbling I'm finding completely other things on the internet. So if you have if you have the answer for that, I'd really like to know that. But with that said, it's not overwhelming. Um, it's just slightly present. I get, there is a bit of like a cream corn aspect, but a little golden apple. A touch of orange, a touch of peach. And there, there is a little bit of vanilla to it, but it's not like, like you know, it's not like an overly overwhelming presence of, of oak characteristics. But yeah, there's, there's that, there's a, it's kind of a floral aspect to this. Let's taste it. Well, it's success. The wine is clean and sound. That's for sure. I was a little worried about that. A little worried it might have some heat damage to it. Um, so it's not that it's sweet, but there's a sweetness of fruit. I feel there's a little more orange coming through on this uh, rather than the, that golden apple from the aromas. And um, not, quite a, not quite a honeyed characteristic, but I feel like there's a little bit of that, almost like a bit of honey, like those little candies. And uh, maybe a little, probably more caramel than honey. I think that's really what I'm getting. Like a caramel golden apple, but it's really subtle. That roasted quality, that kind of roasted corn elote, um, which if you've ever had that, it's really delicious. But not with like the little spice on it. I mean, not, not in the wine. The, yes, eat it with the spice. Uh, cumin, cayenne, something like that. There's a touch of creaminess to it, you know, a good mouthfeel, but at the same time, there's a good acid to it. So without, and, and Jadot's website didn't go really, del didn't delve deep into the winemaking itself, but there might be some partial malolactic going on here. So that's why it maybe retains some acidity. But yeah, this is, this is um, a really delicious wine. I mean, for Chardonnay, this is, this is really delicious. Uh, it, it feels like the alcohol may be slightly elevated. Um, I mean, it's listed at 13.5, so that's definitely within the normal realm of wine these days. But um, yeah, this is a delicious wine. So most likely, like I said, you're probably gonna find this in that 
50, maybe 45 to maybe 60, $65 price range of retail. I mean, this is definitely a well-made wine. And if you see it in the market, I would highly recommend it. All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode. Um, as always, click you know click the subscribe button on YouTube and then just like a little bell notification to like, you know, get notifications when I put new videos up. Um, if you visit the website, I'll have some links uh, up above. You can friend me up there. Hopefully I'll remember to start putting those links in the uh, actual description. Um, actually, I think on my, my homepage for YouTube, I have all the, all the like relevant links like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that type of stuff. Um, hit the PayPal button. I'll probably just put the PayPal link in the description if you want to throw me some ducats. I mean, I talked about Patreon a few episodes ago. I haven't really set anything up on that. That's more of like a later in the year type of thing if I decide to do that. But if you want to throw some ducats my way, help pay for that advance exam. Help pay for uh, the trip I'm going out there. Uh, that would be outstanding. And uh, yeah, we'll see everyone again next time.